Hey folks, welcome back to another bottom five video here on the Dice Tower. Now, the bottom fives are the bottom half of yeah. our top ten games in whatever category that we're going into. So, just understand that on the get-go, this is our bottom half, bottom five of our top ten. The top five is going to be ready and willing for you to watch it immediately after you're done watching this video. We're going to start putting them up at the same time on this channel and the top five will go up on our channel, the flip side of board games. I'm Sam. I'm JT. <laughs> that took a long time for the introduction. I really like <clears throat> them going at the same time. I do too. I uh, mean, it, 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 takes, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. You don't have to yeah. wait for stuff. I get it. I get it, um, and and that's the kind of compromise I'll, I'll I'm willing to make. I'm as too impatient far as... to wait to watch. See, <laughs> I like to watch it all at once. Well, strangely enough, there there, uh, I don't think it ever will be because the Dice Tower is just a, a, a wider netcast. Sure. But um, there has not really been a, a huge tick up in, in views by posting them at the same time. So it is what it is. Copy. It is what it is. Not I a big like deal. It better. Yep. I don't know. So, what did you think about 2013? I think my mic's not on. Well, the audio just got better. I'm going to cut that out. The audio just got better. They probably picked up your voice because I'm wearing my mic right here. So, darn it, it's no big deal. The mic, right. the the, so so that's how we do things. It's fine. You'll you'll get over it. It'll be okay. 2013. Probably. It was that bad. I didn't turn my <laughs> mic on. <laughs> 2013 was really rough for me. Out of all really? the years that we've done so far, this was the worst. The worst. The worst. Really? Yeah. That's a, that's interesting because um, I always, you know, when I'm going through the geek, I always, you know, uh, rank it by Board Game Geeks rank the list, and NAs did not show up until page ten this time. So well, it was like the last couple of years, right? 20, no, it was eight, nine, and then this year has been page ten. Nice. Hmm. When they finally showed up, and I think the last one was ranked in the twenty-six thousand uh, area. So we had thirty-eight in the top one thousand. That's less than it has been. That's before. less than it has been. Well, at least less than the last two years. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was that bad of a year. I don't think there were a lot of big hits that came out. Now there were some, but sure, I didn't really, true. I didn't necessarily like the big hits. But there were some big hits. Yeah, there were. Mm -hmm. um, and but <clears throat> I I I thought it was a great year. I had I think sixteen possibilities on page one. Well, I broke a lot of rules. Yeah, we'll talk about them. Let's but talk I broke about a lot that. Of rules. We'll Let's talk, talk about, about it when they pop up. All right, talk about when you broke. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. All right. <laughs> So let's go ahead and get started. These are our top 10 games from 2013. Well, let's hit it. All right, my number 10. My number 10 is a game that I just talked about on our nature themed games list. And, um, but I'm glad that it popped up on this one because it gives me a chance to talk about something I forgot to talk about on our nature themed list. Oh, My number ten, Samurai Gardener. Samurai Gardener, that is correct. Gardener. And and one of the things that I forgot completely to talk about is I don't actually play the game the way it's written in the rules. Oh, the first phase of the game is a slap game. What it's a slap phase? You put the cards out there, and you have to say some slapjack, top tight hi, or something like that, and then try to put your hand on the card <laughs> that you want to take this turn. What? Uh-uh. We don't play that mess here, brother. Uh, that's not what we do. Mm. I don't want to get my hands messed up by somebody else's nails. Uh. I don't want to get hit by somebody else at the table. <laughs> I think slap gaming is dumb. I'm just going to say that right that now. not a mechanism. However... <laughs> All we do is there's a turn order, and it it moves from round to round, and everybody gets to pick first, and you just pick the card that you want first. The next person picks their card, and adds it into your thing, and that's how we fix that mechanism. Mm -hmm. And if you play it that way, it's a great game. All right. The slap thingy, nah, -uh. shouldn't be slap. Should be katanas. <laughs> Everybody get a little cardboard katana. <laughs> and, what? And a lot of sliced cards at that. 
Cardboard katana. <laughs> yeah, cardboard katana. There you go. Oh. I really enjoy this game, though. It has uh, a great theme to it. It also has a uh, great mechanism. I love piecing, uh, you know, laying tiles slash cards down, placing them and arranging them in a certain order, overlapping some, and that kind of thing. I just really enjoy that mechanism. And this one is a really fast game that has that mechanism in it. And it's very satisfying. So... That's why it's on my list. You can go back and, and, and learn more about it, uh, I guess, if you want, on our nature-themed list. But that's my number 10, Samurai Gardener from Osprey Games. Nice. Mm -hmm. Two lists in a row. I know. Well, it's... be a fantastic game. No, it is what it is. Yeah. It just, you know, coincidence. That's all it is. Yeah. Like I said, I had a hard <laughs> time with this list. There are a few games that I played that are definitely not worth mentioning. Um, so I did the best I could. No, I... <laughs> Games on here, good games. Mm -hmm. um, I just wish the year would have been better. Sure, no, I'm just kidding. I get it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My number ten is a little game called Welcome to the Dungeon. Welcome to the Dungeon. Welcome to the Dungeon. You're one. playing with everybody else on the table. Um, you have a character out there, and they mm -hmm. have equipment, um, and basically you're pushing your luck in this whole bidding process because you're yeah. going to draw a card, and it's going to be some kind of monster card, and you either add it to the deck that this person's going to fight or you take it out of the deck and take one of the pieces of equipment off that um, weakens the adventurer but doesn't put that monster in the deck mm. or you can pass on your turn if you don't think that with that character you can beat what's in that dungeon then you pass and yeah. so basically everybody goes around and the dungeon keeps getting more and more and more monsters until everybody passes and one person gets stuck with it <laughs> then you play card by card and you try to beat every one of those monsters with those cards yep. um, and if you succeed twice I think you win um, and if you fail twice you're eliminated from the game so you're out it's a little tough yep but it's a fast game um, you only need to yeah. do a few rounds and, right. and somebody's won or you know somebody's, somebody's or everybody out. else has been out so but my <laughs> number 10 <laughs> is welcome to the dungeon from yellow that's a good um, one push your luck dungeon yeah. crawl that's a good one it's uh, I I was you you are you are super like fancified with with dungeons and dragons and those kinds of themes. Mm -hmm. I'm not, and so this one I played it and I enjoyed it, but sure. I wasn't drawn to it like you probably were. Yeah. So good pick. My number nine is a. It's it's really a kids game. It's really a kid's game, but it's the kind of kid's game that isn't a slog to play for the adults that are playing the game as well. Okay. And unfortunately, that's how most kid's games are, at least in my experience. Um, they're great for the kid, but the parent's like, I really wish I was doing something else right now. Or I wish we were playing another game. Or I wish we were three years in the future sure. where he can handle the game that I want to play. Yeah. You know, it's that kind of thing. But this one actually works out pretty cool. It is just a roll and move game, which is one of the things, but it's not that bad, actually. It's called Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. Ghost uh, Fighting Treasure Hunters. Ghost Fighting Never heard Treasure Hunters. I actually picked this up at Essen one year. It's it's made by a company called Mattel, but I don't think it's the Mattel <laughs> company that's what? here in the States. It's not? It's different. I oh, think it's okay. a different one, or maybe it's the European Mattel or something like that. I don't huh. know what it is. But a couple of matched cars and... <laughs> Matchbox cards. Matchbox cards <laughs> taped to the top of a box. Not so. So basically what you're trying to do is you're you're a bunch of kids that are are exactly what the thing says. You're looking for treasure and you have to go into these haunted houses and battle all these ghosts that are supposedly protecting the treasure. Uh, it is a roll and move game where you can only you're you're restricted by how many uh, spaces you can roll by how but by the die that you roll. But on top of that uh, when you go into these different rooms, sometimes you have to fight the the the, the monsters, uh, you know, the ghosts. Sometimes uh, th there aren't any ghosts in there, and you have to pick up all these treasures. And, and you're basically trying to pick up a certain number of treasures and get back out before uh, too many ghosts are in the house. And there's a couple of expansions for it as well. Where well, I think there's one expansion for it where you can actually go into the basement of the house. Mm. And uh, there's more stuff down there that you can get into and all that kind of thing. It's a really fun kids game that is also fun for the adult. And okay. so that's why it's my number nine because uh, I really enjoyed it. My family's really enjoyed it over the, over the years as well. 
So that's it. Number nine, Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. Ghost Fighting. What a title. That's a good title. It is. It's a really good one. All right. My number nine is a card game called Sushi Go. Ah. Um, Sushi Go is a great card game. When you get around, it's close drafting. Um, you start every round. You have different uh, different types of sushi and everything else that will be mm. shuffled into a deck. Mm. Um, and then you're just drafting out sushi combinations to get the most points. Yep. Um, trying to pick up puddings for the end or trying to pick up you know, nigiri or whatever else. But it's just a fast card drafting game. Mm -hmm. Everybody sure. drafts their sushi, and then you add up your score, um, and then you yep. go to the next round. Yep. So This is one that never really grabbed me. And, and I'm usually a sucker for, for food-themed games. But um, it just, uh, every, I mean, everybody around me was playing it. Everybody mm -hmm. loved it. And so I'm not, you know, crapping on it because I don't think it's a good game. I know it is. It just it wasn't ever for me. But... Um, a lot of people love that game, and isn't there like a sushi roll now? Dice. Yeah, button? this one got replaced by sushi roll. For yeah, me. I still yeah. have sushi roll. I like it a lot yeah. better. Yep, uh, it's the, definitely the next step up. But cool, that's good. All right, my number nine, sushi go, sushi go. All right, my number eight is uh, the first of two Academy Games games that are on my list from 2013. This one is about the U.S. War for Independence, and it's called 1775 Rebellion. Mm. There you go. Um, and I, I just, I love games that teach you something without you realizing that it's teaching you anything. And that's exactly what this game does. It, it lets you experience the, the, the War for Independence and you get to make the decisions mm -hmm. of all of that troop movement and all of those battles and all that kind of stuff. But, um, and you're learning about it as you play through it, but you're just playing the game. Yeah. That's all it is. And I like this system that, that uh, Academy Games uses for these things. They have a certain name for it, and I can't remember um, what the system is that they use, but uh, it's just a really neat system. They use it in... Um, 878 Vikings as well. It's just a it, it, it's it's a fun game about uh, the the American Revolution and it it's just one of those games that I love it for its historical value. It's a great game though. Okay. I enjoy it. I'm sorry. Fair. That's all right. I'm sorry. It. I don't own it anymore, so my my memory of it is super faded. But it's a great game. And it's a great tactical game, and it simulates the, the war for, for independence very well. So that's it. That's my number eight, 1775, Rebellion. There you go. History on rails. There you go. History on rails. Fair enough. <laughs> right on. My number eight is a Matt Leacock game, game right, called Forbidden Desert. Yep. Um, Forbidden Desert is, Forbidden. in my opinion, I haven't played Forbidden Jungle. Um, I've mm. played the other three. Yeah. Um, Forbidden Desert, for, in my opinion, is the hardest. Mm. Um, and yeah. it can definitely be overly hard. It's kind of funny because I've had several people who'd be like, hey, let's play Forbidden Desert. And I'm like, man, that thing's hard. And they're like, we never lose. And then I start <laughs> playing with them and find out how many different wrong. rules they're doing wrong. <laughs> like, and then I'm like, no, you can't do that. You got to do that. And then the next thing you know, it's a really hard game for them. And they're like, oh, man. Yeah. It's a very, very difficult game to win. <laughs> like, but because uh, the, It's because of all the, the sand mechanism, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the sand mechanism and the piling and the yeah and everything else. But yeah, um, Forbidden Desert is still a really cool game. You're trying yeah. to find, in these desert tiles, you're trying to find the different pieces of, this, of the ship to get off um, that you have to put all together. And the cool mechanism is... is um, you have to basically triangulate the coordinates to where that piece is, yeah. um, which is pretty neat. But the sand is piling up, and you're trying to clear sand, and the map is moving around, shifting uh, every round. And yeah. yeah, it's a very difficult one, but it's yeah. a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is probably my uh, it's probably my second favorite. I really like Forbidden Island the best. I think Forbidden Island is the best. I haven't played Forbidden Jungle yet. No. I have played Forbidden Skies. And that one's probably my least favorite sure. out of the three. Same. Same order for me. Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right. My number seven 
is a game, uh, again, this is the second of the two Academy Games games that are on my list. And uh, this one is called Freedom the Underground Railroad. And again, it's one of those games that teaches you as you're playing it. But I loved the balance that you had to strike between uh, uh, using the Underground Railroad. Um, but on top of that, I like the fact that I don't believe anybody played the bad guy, which would have been really bad. <laughs> I mean, That's a really bad. Position. That's a horrible position to yeah. be in. But there are games where you have, somebody has to be that bad guy, mm -hmm. but it wasn't so. And this one, and that's one of the things that I liked about it. I don't think so. Um, and it was just a, a great, uh, a lot of people don't, I mean, it just didn't, doesn't get, it gets talked about now more than it used to, but the, the Underground Railroad was a, a really noble thing. People were giving their lives to help oh, yeah. slaves escape the South. Oh, yeah. And I just 100%. think, I think it's a great idea uh, for a game because it teaches you about a historical period of time that, that, I mean, gets glossed over um, often, and and so I just I I, I thought it was a great game. It, it 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 taught. I hate using that word taught. It it simulated the the harrowing experiences yeah. that the slaves had to go through, uh, and and of course you can't really nail it all down ex uh, exactly to how bad it was, but at least it gives you a sure, taste. Sure, I was. At least it gives you a taste yeah, for how it is. Every one of those situations, right, is very, very harrowing. So if it gives you that feel, that's yeah. you know, that's pretty cool. I mean, the tension that it, that it brings mm. up. It's just really good. But I, I, it's a great game. Uh, it's not going to be for everybody, of course, because it is a very educational yeah. type game. Um, and It's not a one versus all game. No. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> Thankfully. But that is his freedom. The Underground Railroad, my number seven. Nice. My number seven is a surprising little card game. Um, box comes with a bunch of cards and a bunch of cubes, and that's it. Uh, it is called Sail to India. No, um, Sail to India this. is a really cool little game, and I really like the mechanism. In Sail to India, you're starting out in... I'll think of the name. You're starting out in one city. It's and definitely you, not India. No, it's not. And you have like <laughs> nine cards, nine or ten cards, to get to the India card. Got it. Um, the first couple of cards are face up, and on those cards they'll have goods that you can get from these different uh, these different places as you take your ships from. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to discover your way the rest of the way to India. Mm -hmm. um, and to do that, though, you have a certain number of cubes. I think, let me think, you start out with five, seven, I don't know, there's like 12 cubes on, you have like 12 mm -hmm. cubes. But these 12 cubes represent your workers for everything. So you'll start out with one who is a worker that's out on the starting city. Um, and he can become a captain of a ship and start sailing a ship down, hmm. you know, to these different islands. Yeah. And at some point, if he stops somewhere, he might pick up, you'll, you'll take him off and put him on a card, which means that he's picking up a resource, right? Or, you know, he's trading and getting goods. Yeah. Um, but you, so you have these captains on these ships. You also have your same cubes. Uh, you have three research, research cubes that you can use to upgrade technologies. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have a cube for your speed of your ship. And then you have cubes for your income. So, And those are bankers. So once you have over five income, then a second cube would go on there. So now you're using an extra cube for income. Yeah. Um, so everything you do is managing your cubes, getting them out as captains, mm -hmm. or using them on your player board, or using them for research. Yep. Um, so you're kind of managing what all these cubes are doing, and they're each taking up a, or making a different role. But yeah. your your end goal is to get to India with the most points, and mm -hmm. whoever discovers India, you know, gets something, gets extra points or whatever else. But it's just a really cool little card game. Yeah. Um, and and it's quite interesting balancing what you do with those cubes because yeah. so cool. it's really cool. Alrighty, super duper. Like I said, I've never played the game, so I can't really comment much, but you take it. Alright, my number six is, I believe, the first uh, installment that Z-Man had for their Around the World series for Carcassonne. Hmm. This one's called Carcassonne South Seas. Okay. And um, I have been a fan of Carcassonne for a long time 
and I, I've, I've always enjoyed it. When they started doing the Around the World, they were standalone versions of Carcassonne that had nuances to them, different ways to score, like there's fruit in South Seas, there's, um, you're dealing with islands and delivering fruit to different parts of the island, and you can score uh, different, it's basically the same idea that Carcassonne has you're still building that map in front of mm -hmm. uh in, in front of everybody and, and it's always you know you're you're drawing one and playing one and all that kind of stuff but none of that has changed but all of the little nuances that happen when you place tiles sure. in it what your uh people do as they're in the map that type of stuff that's mm -hmm. different and I just love those little standalone boxes so and this was the first one uh and I really enjoyed it so that's what nice. kind of turned uh that on in my uh, collecting uh, is to, to pick up the other ones. So uh, that's why it's on the list. Number six. All last right. Last one. There you go. Last one, South for, last one for this list. Mm -hmm. Last full game for this list because my last one for this list, my number six is a cheat. Oh. Cheat. No, it's a cheat. Um, I'm cheating. Um, no. That's okay. My number six, and the reason I put it at number six is because it is kind of a cheat. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it would probably be higher. Um, but yeah. it is the expansion Scoundrels of Skullport from Lords of, Lo for Lords of Waterdeep. Oh, ah, okay. You, um, you, okay, I got you. I don't think including this, an expansion is a cheat. It's kind of a cheat. But if that's it's all right. good enough. It is good enough. And not only that, but it takes um, a very simple worker placement game in Lords of Waterdeep and it adds a couple of extra things. Um, you know, the, there's some new with the... Um, what is it called? The Undermountain expansion. You know, it has some new harder quests to do. Um, it also introduces this thing where you have to put resources out or cubes out on worker placement spots, which then people can later pick up when they go to those worker placement spots. So, huh. so you're sweetening the pot for them. Um, so it's stronger actions when you do that, obviously, <laughs> for you, but then they get something back in return. Did you and, bling this out too? Uh, it's all part of the same box, so yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's the same bling. You didn't have to do extra bling for this yeah, one. Gotcha. Um, but it also has the scoundrels portion, uh, which brings corruption into the game. Mm. Um, and the corruption board is really kind of cool because, again, when you're getting corruption, you're usually doing stronger actions. Right. Um, but then you're taking corruption off of this track. And the interesting thing is the more corruption that everybody takes, the like you can get it up to it starts at like negative one point per corruption you have but i mean yeah. it could get up to like negative six points per corruption you had six or seven um but that all depends on how much corruption every single person's taking so mm -hmm. um you're kind of balancing like how much corruption they have how much are they going to lose um, so it's like how much more corruption you have than other people no at the end of the game you multiply whatever the negative number is based on how far the track is Versus how much corruption you have, oh, and you just geez. cut that right off the top. So, Ouch. Um, so it's a really interesting how many of those powerful actions do you want to do? How mm -hmm. much of that extra stuff do you want to do? Because, yeah. um, so anyways, my number six, Lords of Water Deep, Water Deep, Scoundrels of Skullport. I don't know why I can't say that. Um, it's but a mouthful. Came out in 2012. It came out in 2012. 13. Came out in 2013. I was like, I was like, oh, that's why you well, cheating? Because you just drawn in from another year. No, came out in 2013, <laughs> and it's almost one of those must-have expansions. That's cool. Well, that that uh, if it's a must-have expansion, it's, it's like right there, I yeah. I would I I think it's less of a cheat for an expansion like that. Okay, Fair. because it changes the game and it makes it makes the game that much better. All right. Well, okay. I'll try not to cheat so much on the top half. But there's one cheat there, too. Sorry. Spoilers. Spoilers. All right. Well, that is our bottom five of our top ten games of 2013. You can head on over to the flip side right now and go check out our top five as soon as you want to. So, until then, we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. See you later.